question is, Donald Trump got elected because of the Electoral College. Is there any way Congress is going to get rid of Electoral College so the president will be elected by popular vote? know if there's enough support for um, getting rid of the Electoral College. I don't know if it's a bipartisan idea, uh, but I do think it's wrong that it's not one person, one vote. I, I think um, we should spend a lot more time thinking about how to get to one person, one vote, and I'm not sure how to get from A to B. I don't think we have the certain people that we need in the House and Senate today. But I think one good thing we could do is flip the House and flip the Senate and change the players list and then begin to talk about how we get back to a, a, a direct democracy. Hello, Senator. I feel like I just won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my question is um, more for what's being done here locally in New York City. Um, in terms of your interactions with our assembly leaders, our senate leaders, and our council members, because New York has a host of issues. Um, the rent is too damn high. Um, the MTA doesn't go anyone's way. I'm late to work almost every day. Um, so, and just recently, the school uh, speed cameras uh, have been turned off, which puts children at risk. So, what are you doing in terms of communicating with our local leaders to get these problems fixed? So, affordable housing is a huge issue that has a federal uh, hook to it. Um, unfortunately, President Trump uh, nominated someone to run HUD who doesn't believe in affordable housing and believe in public housing. So, it's a problem. Um, I think making sure we can send more federal dollars to states and cities so they can actually invest in affordable housing is one of our most important responsibilities. Uh, I also think funding infrastructure is really important. Uh, we have so much trouble in our city because our subways keep shutting down, so many delays, so many derailments, people die. I mean, it, it couldn't be worse. Um, our president doesn't want to fund uh, rail and infrastructure. He has not allowed us to move forward on the Gateway Tunnel, which is really important long term for our rail lines because a lot of commerce comes straight through. Um, New York and New Jersey through that tunnel system and it's old and falling apart and if we don't invest now it could create a huge long-term problem for us so um, my job on the federal level to help your city council members state senators and state assembly members is to bring federal money and to make sure we can bring more back into our city and state and one of the best ways we do that is through infrastructure and through transportation infrastructure um, New York, uh, we are the biggest users of, um, of transit. We, we actually use the most transit dollars for mass transit than anywhere else in the country. And so getting that money in is one of the best ways we can get some of the money we pay out in taxes back into New York. And so I'm very committed to that. I sit on the Environment and Public Works Committee, which is one of the committees that deals with transportation. As a consequence, um, I will keep fighting for New York dollars on that committee. It's one of the best ways I can help alleviate the strains we have in New York City. Number 37. Number 37. How about number 141? How about number eight nine? Number eighty nine. Okay. You're, okay. So those are going to be our last two questions of the evening, and we want to thank you all for for contributing your voice to the discussion. Hi, Senator. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming, and I saw you uh, last year, I believe, at the Mid Rivers College. <laughs> Thank you for your staff uh, as well. They're always very enthusiastic and responsive whenever uh, I make any requests for them. Um, I know this has been covered, but uh, today we have a president who's conspiring with hostile foreign governments, a president who personally enriches himself, who has made uh, a, a policy of immigration uh, that personally affects my life 
uh, based on racism, in my opinion. And I just want to know, should we take back the Congress and the Senate? Um, what's going to be done to, uh, I guess, restore our faith in the rule of law and the democratic institutions that, uh, that seem uh, terribly at risk right now, to be honest? Thank you. So yes, our president um, continues to uh, support Russia and not hold Putin accountable for his election meddling. He continues to spew hate into this into our communities across our country um, uh, by calling out moral equivalencies when racism is clear. Um, he is um, not only racist, but he's. Uh, uh, been anti-Muslim, doesn't believe in the freedom of religion, doesn't believe in um, the independence of the judiciary, the independence of um, the Department of Justice investigation. So yes, all, all of the concerns that you mentioned are worrisome, and restoring the rule of law um, is vital. Um, there's a couple of things that I think uh, are necessary. Um, if we take back the House and Senate, it's really important that we create oversight and accountability over the Trump administration. It's the most important thing we can do. Um, and by doing that, we can begin to right the ship of these wrongs that are happening over and over again. Um, stopping hate in communities are, is really hard because we have so much institutional racism and systemic racism that needs to be tackled across all issues. So whether you're talking about criminal justice reform and decriminalizing marijuana, or whether you're talking about uh, fixing the economy, or whether you're talking about health care, education, um, having daily instances of racism along with systemic and institutional racism makes it really hard uh, to be a person of color in our country today um, because you endure so much on so many levels. And so what we can do is begin to right the ship through all types of reforms um, and make the economy work for everybody. I think it's um, very disturbing that uh, a young black man born in our city today um, had 10 times more likelihood of getting arrested for marijuana in his pocket than my children would have. Um, that unemployment among black youth in this city uh, is might be 10, 15 percent, whereas un stated unemployment is 4 percent. And so these are real issues that you have to address, and it's going to take a lot of work by Democrats, by Congress to begin to put in place ideas like full employment, where anybody who wants to have a full-time job can get the training they need to have that full-time job. Um, making sure we end things like maternal mortality in our country, uh, where black women today have a 10 times greater, 12 times greater likelihood in this city to die giving birth. So these are all things that I think we can begin to rectify, but it's gonna take a different set of players. Uh, and. You know, to deal with some of these issues, it shouldn't just be left to people of color to, ch to change these issues. People like me who are in office as a senator, as a white woman, have a responsibility to do this too. And so that's why I hope that if we do take back the House and Senate, we can begin to make this country stronger for everybody, fair for everybody, and um, create more opportunity for everybody. Hi, my name is Valerie Francis. Uh, I used to teach uh, on Willoughby Avenue in Kent uh, a while back. I always had to work two jobs, kind of a regular full-time government job. Um, and uh, so I've always been involved with youth. I, I was a single mom raising a child here on a government salary. And uh, so I can imagine what it's like now, with Brooklyn being so more, much more expensive, someone to raise a child. And I was shocked the change of what used to happen when I taught at the junior high here, the gifted are science, and they said to me, the kids, oh, um, why do I need to learn to do a book read science report? Because I'm going to get pregnant next year, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to high school. Now the story I hear when I went to the WACP meeting for Brooklyn is that um, sex trafficking age range uh, is 11 to 16. That the, the sun July 30th, that was um, world like, well, sex trafficking day. And New York City, 
the police precinct came, and a representative came, and he said that um, most of this is done online, and it's the other youths recruiting each other. So my concern is how we create jobs. Like they shouldn't be like my son was looking for work, and he can get luckily got a job when he was 14. But I think all kids uh, in New York City should be able to think they have a chance of getting a job at 16 to 18 when they're in high school. This way, they're not looking at being uh, lured into the sex trafficking uh, industry. Uh, I'm sure it's sometimes a trick, but they're using 16-year-olds to recruit 11-year-olds. Um, one option I had talked to some of my relatives that had kids about to go to college, even at that age, they were afraid to look at the jobs that they have in D.C. where you can go there for the summer and work and learn the, the, the business of government because they might become a Monica Lewinsky. Um, they hear all the stuff that goes on with women. So I'm trying to ask in your office, at your level, if you could have local training for youth in your, because you have a number of offices in Albany and in here in D.C., but start younger. Don't start at 18, 19. They already got the competition on the other end for the games and, and, the, and the prostitution, as you see, because technology, people are just so, so savvy, the predators out there. So I'm trying to see if that's something that could be, is it other regulations get so younger and local? But everything now is supposed to be local. Um, so your question addresses a lot of challenges we have uh, for our communities across the state to make sure our youth have opportunities. Um, for a lot of communities, um, there's not enough summer jobs. Uh, there's not even enough summer programs, not enough um, things for kids to do. And so one of the things I think we have to keep investing is uh, are things like the Summer Jobs Program, which is funded by the federal government that creates opportunities for kids uh, to learn skills in the summer months. Um, I think it's important that we invest in those kinds of programs. Related, it's important to invest in summer meals programs too. Because for a lot of kids, uh, the best meal they had in the day is the summer school lunch or their school lunches, and so in the summer they don't have it. So one of the things I fight for on the ag committee is to make sure we keep funding uh, school pro school lunch programs during summer months, um, so that kids don't go hungry and can get basic nutrition. Um, but I had a bill that I worked on that got included, I think, last year, which was an uh, urban jobs bill that I worked with the Urban League on. And this was an important bill because for a lot of kids, if they get into trouble anytime when they're young, anytime in grade school or high school, their ability to get that job in the future is evaporated. And so it was particularly those kids to give them on the job training, skills training, all summer long, after school, after high school, so that they can actually get a good job. And that's why I do believe, and I mentioned this earlier, that our goal in society should be full employment. Anybody who wants to be working should be able to be working. And that means change actual job training. So I would take all that money that was given to the millionaires and billionaires and those tax cuts and all those corporations that didn't need it, I would use some of that money to fund job training for job opportunities and actually make that type of money possible for all Americans. Anybody who wants to be working full time should have the exact training they need to get a job that's available today. Uh, and uh, that's the way I would create economic opportunity for everyone, and I would make it a priority. I think it's one of the most important things we can do for our country, is to make sure everyone's working at their greatest and fullest potential. And if you don't invest in it, it's not going to happen. Because chronic unemployment is real, and racism is real. And if you don't address those two problems with real job training, and create opportunities to have full employment and skills training, it's never going to happen. And so that, I think, has to be a national priority. Thank you. Okay, there's a lot more elected leaders here than stood up in the beginning. Okay, so we had Joanne stand up. Eric Gonzalez is here, our Brooklyn DA. Is he here? There he is. Councilmember, majority leader, uh, Lori Com uh, Combo. Where is she? Where's Lori? Oh, she's outside with the baby. And her son, Prince. Yes, we heard Prince. That's right. Um, and our Congresswoman, Yvette Clark, is here, too. So again, thank you. for the time we've spent. Um, it really makes a difference that I can have the opportunity to hear from you directly about all the concerns we talked about tonight. 
I know some people like selfies, so if you want one, come get one. Um, just come up the stairs, hand your phone to somebody who's gonna stand right here, take a picture and walk that way. Thank you all for coming. Hello, good afternoon, Senator Gillibrand. Thank you for coming to Brooklyn. My name is Alice and I am a U.S. Army veteran. I was not able to ask you a question. However, I do know that you are a member of the Armed Services Committee and I'd like to know, one, do you plan on having a meeting with the new VA Secretary Robert Wilkie and will the Brooklyn VA Hospital be closing anytime soon? Many of us veterans are concerned. We've been hearing rumors that the Brooklyn VA Hospital is closing. Thank you. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's Assemblymember Joanne Simon from the 52nd Assembly District here in Brooklyn. Yes, and we both so we were just at a town hall with Senator Gillibrand. Uh, it was great. She took a lot of questions from the audience um, randomly, and uh, people asked really, really important questions. And she gave, I thought, really um, smart and uh, uh, honest answers to uh, everybody's questions. And so I thought it was a very successful event overall. Okay, thank you. I was think, should we blame Trump for this mess, or should we make which make mess? Something? No, what was going on, or we should be to make more peaceful this. Uh, so your question is, should we bl to blame Trump for this mess? Yeah. Uh, I think the question is, which mess are you talking about? There are so many that he's created. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. So there you have it. Thank you. Okay, yes, thank you, uh, I, you know, I just have to say, you know, it was very... Oh, my name is uh, Randall Graham. And I would say this was this was very good, you know. She talked a lot. She was very professional and she did a good job.